average, it rains 152 days a year here in Manchester. That's according to the internet. But I think it could be a little bit more than that. Don't get me wrong, the rain is part of the charm here. But when it's sunny, it's almost mandatory to be out there, especially if you want to do some photography. Because this city has so much to offer when you have a good light. And whether we like it or not, sometimes light is the main subject on our photography. So today I'll be taking you around a sunny Manchester to practice some street photography and in this POV I'll be sharing some thoughts and insights about how I like to approach my street photography and some tips as well. So let me know if you find them useful. Today I'll be shooting with the Fujifilm X-T4 and the 35mm f2 lens. I already talked about this lens and how much it is helping me with my photography. All the photos are raw and edited with my presets to emulate film. I'm about to launch my website so you will be able to grab them from there. Stay tuned for that. Alright, let's get right into it. Hey everyone, Nelson here. It's a beautiful sunny day in Manchester as you can see and I'm starting my photo walk here in this area called Castlefield. It's a very important place and it takes you to those Manchester industrial years. So to start I decided to play with the light of this area. This is just me warming up and try getting into the zone. I spotted this light on the spiller and the graffiti on it and I stepped back a little bit to adjust my composition. I was lucky enough that someone passed by right into my frame so it was a good photo to warm up. Warming up is crucial, I think, because it helps you to tune into your surroundings and prepare you to be ready for whatever comes next, so always try to warm up. Next, I headed towards this pedestrian bridge, it's a very popular one, and I wanted to photograph something different. I noticed the reflection of these double glass windows and double glass windows are great for reflection shots because they add more abstraction to the composition. So I'm just adjusting my camera because I was shooting in manual and started to compose the scene. And it was just a matter of waiting for someone to walk by. Patient is key in street photography. So for the first photo, there's a lot of people on the bridge and I think I will keep it in color because uh, all the colors going on and a lot going on with the double reflection as well. However, I wanted a more isolated subject. So after 10 or 15 minutes of waiting, someone walked by across the bridge and for this one I'm going to use black and white with the ceiling of this buff to introduce some negative space into the photo. Negative space is a powerful tool because it adds that interesting element to the photo. Castlefield was pretty quiet so I decided it was time to head towards city center and here I found a very interesting light, so I decided to play around to create silhouettes for the next photo. Silhouettes can add a sense of mystery and drama sometimes. another opportunity for a reflection shot with some vibrant red 
of the column and the yellow of the bin. And I wanted to create something more abstract, but I think the guy on the bike is not Wolfram, so uh, it came more abstract than expected. But I wanted to share the photo with you to show that sometimes not all the photos come out as you expect. Here we have these stairs from this very important tram stop that can be very crowded. I wanted just one person on the stairs and use the black of the structure as a sort of foreground element. Geometry and colors are very useful and here we have, you know, lines, triangles and some nice colors. So I'm happy with this one. After that, I came across this tunnel with great light and it's great for these type of shots. What I had to do was get my composition right, make sure the exposure was spot on to protect my light and shadows and wait for someone to walk by. And while editing, I noticed the pigeon's shadow in the top right corner of the shot. Uh, that was a happy surprise and adds something to the photo as well. So now we made our way to St. Peter's Square. Uh, this is a real hot spot in Manchester. It's a busy area, always filled with people. And what caught my eye this time was the way the light was hitting the public library and the shadows from the trees. So I wanted to have a more minimalistic approach here. Just show the contrast of light versus shadows, I guess. Next up, I noticed how the pillars were casting these shadows. And there was a lady on the phone and a silhouette right behind her. And I have to say, this is uh, one of my favorites of the day so far. There is some sort of layer in the photo. We have the lady in the foreground, a silhouette in the middle and another person further back. This concept of layering is something that I really admire in photography. I pick upon this by studying a master photographer called Alex Webb. Uh, he's a huge inspiration to me, he's one of my favorites and the way he uses layers in his photos is just incredible. Learning from photographers you admire is crucial, it not only inspires you but also equips you with new techniques to enhance your own style. Here's another shot, but in black and white, just to show that this type of photos sometimes work way better in color. I headed towards the entrance of the library. This place has this structure on the ceiling that creates reflections and textures in such a, a unique and crazy way. It's a spot that I always wanted to use to create abstract compositions and I believe this 
lens or this focal length I use here plays a big part in achieving these abstractions. I know that abstract compositions in street photography might not be everyone's cup of tea, but I personally find it incredibly fun and rewarding to explore. It's a different way of seeing and capturing the world. What do you guys think? I love to hear your thoughts on abstract photography. After the last photo, things slowed down a bit. Nothing happened for about 30 minutes. So I switched my approach and started to use the camera more like a point and shoot or shooting from the hip. Just going with the flow and trying to capture whatever caught my attention. I find this as a good time to just relax and keep things fun and sometimes I just look for interesting characters, you know, people with unique glasses, cool hairstyles or anyone doing something a bit unusual. It's a different kind of photography, more spontaneous I would say, but keeps the creativity flowing even in those slower moments. Okay, back to it. Um, here we have these shadows on the concrete wall and I think it was a great setup for something minimalistic again. Just playing with the light and shadows. Next, I headed over the northern quarter because streets were getting really busy and that's when I spotted this car just wash and this was great because reflections and curves of the hoods uh, just make some cool reflections and make them pop and I really like the abstract quality on the reflections in these shots. As my walk was coming to an end, I stumbled upon this wall with some hearts and I started to frame a shot looking for a way to incorporate them into a photo. That's when I noticed a mirror inside the building while I was switching my angle and this was great because having another reflecting surface inside of a building allows you to create this sort of double reflection uh, composition. So I really like this one. So this is the last photo of the day, definitely one of my favorites. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, let me know what's your favorite photo of this walk and let me know what you think about you know, the comments or the tips that I share with you. And if you are enjoying the content, feel free to subscribe, give it a like and leave a comment. I guess that's it for today, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.